Bromo Seltzer and NBC bring you William Gargan, starring as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. The major trouble with murder as a career is that it has no future. You come pretty quickly to the end of your rope, and usually it's around your neck. Bromo Seltzer, famous for fast relief of headache and upset stomach, and the National Broadcasting Company present William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. This is Bill Gargan. Before I tell you about tonight's story, which I call The Crimson Queen, Here's a word from Bromo Seltzer, famous for fast relief of upset stomach, as well as headache. Miss Jordan, report to clinic. Miss Jordan, report to clinic. Miss Jordan... In a recent clinical test, eight out of ten nurses reported that for upset stomach, Bromo Seltzer works best. Actually, Bromo Seltzer relieved distress of upset stomach better, more effectively than any of the five leading upset stomach remedies which were studied. You see, sparkling, refreshing Bromo Seltzer contains sodium citrate, one of the finest ingredients known to doctors for the relief of acid indigestion. And only Bromo Seltzer gently relieves nervous tension so often associated with upset stomach. So remember... Eight out of ten nurses report for upset stomach, Bromo Seltzer works best. Next time, for prompt relief of upset stomach as well as headache, take Bromo Seltzer the one leading remedy proved best by a recent clinical test. For best results, use cool water. Follow the label. Avoid excessive use. And remember... Eight out of ten nurses report for upset stomach. Bromo Seltzer works best. Barry Craig speaking... Wintertime, and the nights may be longer, but if you're a confidential investigator like I am, this does you very little good, except that it gets you out of your office that much quicker. But in my case, it generally gets me over to Willie's wagon, which isn't bad. It's warm there, the windows are steamed over. There's a feeling of being protected against the wind and snow and cold. The only trouble is, there's also Willie's food. Craig. Yes, Willie? I ever make cracks about your investigating? No. Then lay off my food. I'd like to. I'm at the cracks. What's the matter with that hamburger you're working on? I don't think it's completely dead. Then drink some coffee. That'll kill it. What'll it do to me? You ain't had a stomach lining for ten years. What are you worrying about? Touche. Touche. Eh, some days you can't make a nickel. Hey, what do you know? Maybe a cash customer. Hey, there's something wrong Mr. with this. Mr. Craig. Yes? My, my name is Hanson. Peter Hanson. I... Hey, you better grab a stool. You look... No, no, never, never mind. I was at your office. Elevator men told me I might find you here. Jake was right. Well, I want to... To retain you. Well, that's not hard, want, but... Want to retain you? To, to find? To find? Yes. Uh, my murderer. Oh. Hey, he passed out. Yeah. Way out. What? He was holding the front of his coat together with one hand. It's open now. So what? Oh. That's blood. A knife wound. Blood's still coming out, which means he was stabbed not very long ago. Something in his other hand. If I can get it out. Yeah. What is it? Part of a chess set. A queen. A crimson queen. Peter Hansen had come to Willie's wagon with a fatal wound in his chest and a crimson queen gripped tightly in his hand. Peter Hansen had come to Willie's wagon to die there and had died. You want I should call the cops? In a minute. They might not like you going through his pockets. Who's going to tell him about it? 
Okay, but... He was my client. Not for long. Didn't pay you much either. Bargain basement tonight. All right. You can notify the police now. Find anything on him? Just an address. Some days nobody can make a nickel. Uh, hey, you leaving? Yeah. Well, should I tell the cops you were here? Sure. And where shall I tell them you went? Where? Tell them I went looking for uh, a chess game. Peter Hansen's house ran to a barbered lawn, ivy on the walls, and uh, a butler in the doorway. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, you wish to see... Mr. Hanson. Come in, sir. Uh, who shall I say is... Barry Craig. Very good, Mr. Craig. I'll tell Mr. Hanson you're here. Oh, wait a minute. You're sure he's in? Oh, yes, sir. Mr. Hanson's in the study. Doing what? Playing chess, sir. I didn't like to call the butler a liar, so low-bred. On the other hand, I was pretty sure I hadn't been dreaming. I decided to be low-bred. You could be mistaken. Oh, no, sir. If you'll wait here... I'd get lonely. So let's go to the study together, huh? But, uh... Or shall I try it all by myself? Very well. Yes, sir. Uh, that is... That is, uh, lead the way. Well, this is most... M most... Sure it is. You just think harshly of me. Maybe that'll make you feel better. I don't know what Mr. Hanson will say. Funny, but I've got a feeling he won't say anything. That the door to the study? Uh, yes, sir, I'll... No, no, no. You go back to the pantry or wherever it is butlers hang out. I couldn't... A brawl would be even worse, wouldn't it? I... I suppose so. What's your name? Groves, sir. Goodbye, Groves. I opened the door of the study and walked in. Nobody noticed me. It was the kind of room that looks maybe a little hackneyed after you've seen enough English pictures. But I guess the movies got the idea from someplace. There was a small table over at the far end near the fireplace. There was a chessboard on the table covered with chess pieces. And there was a chess game going on. Yes, uh, yes, Groves, what is it? Oh, this isn't Groves. Then go away. I can't be disturbed. My bishop's in a dreadful position. So's Peter Hansen. What? Oh, you're... you're not Groves. I already mentioned that. If you'd looked up from the board a little quicker... Who are you? Barry Craig. Groves had orders I not... cancel them. I threatened to start a brawl. <laughs> well, everybody knows who I am. I don't know who anybody is. Then why come here? You can do something besides play chess and laugh. Yes. I didn't exactly mean... You meant introducing people to people. Uh-huh. I'm Mona Bailey, and he is Walter Hanson. How do you do? Well, now that that's been taken care of... We're just uh... beginning, Mr. Hanson. This is your house? Oh, nonsense. Sorry. Peter is the wealthy one. Your brother? Of course he's my brother. There's a resemblance. Well, naturally there would be. Um, you said something about Peter before, didn't you? Yes, I said he was in a bad position. Uh, you said, to be precise, that he was in a worse position than my bishop. I'm about to lose my bishop. You've already lost your brother. I tried hard to watch both Walter Hanson and the girl when I let that one go. I had some idea about analyzing the expressions on their faces. It didn't work. Walter had no expression, and Mona's face was uh, not the face of a woman you'd expect to find spending a long winter evening playing chess. Apparently, your message is of some importance. I'm not quite sure of its meaning. Nothing fancy about it. Your brother's dead. Oh, dear. Wouldn't uh, you like to add a little something to that outburst of wild grief, Miss Bailey? Mrs. Bailey. My mistake. Not a very serious one. My husband's dead. So you turn to chess? I have quite a strong feeling that all this is, uh, this conversation is improper. You uh, may be right. Peter's death is, of course, a, a great shock. A very great shock. You've said so. But, uh, how did he die? Automobile accident or, uh... Heart failure. Oh? 
Strange, though. I had no idea Peter's heart was weak. It wasn't until someone stuck a knife in it. The pair of them were good, very good. All they did was stare politely at me. I might have just told them the fuchsias in the greenhouse were suffering from a spot of blight, or, or maybe mildew. How distressing. Yes. On the other hand, uh, now you're the wealthy brother. Why, yes. Yes, now that you mention it. Oh, but only half as wealthy. Who gets the other half? I do. Peter Hansen left you half as dull because you play such good chess? I was married to his sister's only child. Oh, that's good. Keeps it in the family. Walter over there was in quite a hurry to let me know you had as good a reason as he had for... Uh... Murdering Peter? But how could either of us have murdered him? He was alive when he left the house. When? Oh, about an hour ago. And we, uh, Walter and I, have been here ever since. Together? Together. That right, Mr. Hansen? Of course it is. Playing chess? Yes. The number of moves both of you made figures... Your bishop is in a bad position, Mr. Hanson. I know it. But, Mrs. Bailey... Yes? Where's your red queen? Mona Bailey had the red pieces, minus a couple of pawns which were lying at the side of the board, and a red queen which wasn't anywhere as I could see. But then I already knew where it was. I lost it. Careless of you to go shopping with it. Uh, I meant Walter took it. That means it would be off the board, but... Well, uh, I, I was so angry with myself, I threw it in the fire. A wild impulse? Well, I suppose you see I've quite a temper. Sure. Only thing is, uh, your queen file hasn't been opened yet. It would have been impossible for any white piece to take it. I like the kind of detectives they have on radio much better. What kind's that? The kind that doesn't know anything about chess. Still, Walter will confirm my anecdote, won't he, dear? Of course. You became angry and threw it in the fire. The Red Queen. The Red Queen. Wouldn't it be a shame if it turned up someplace else? Good night. Uh, wait, don't... Uh, pay no attention to him, my dear. He... I can't let him go without... Oh. You uh, better answer that. It'll be the police. They'll have news for you. Except it won't be news, will it? <laughs> I left the study and went down the hall to the front door. Somewhere behind me, someone was answering a telephone. Someone else was slamming a door. I didn't pay attention. I got to the front door and went through it. The lawn was still as neatly barbered, and the moonlight lay smooth and cold on it. I started across it, and back in the house, somebody opened a window. But not to let some fresh air in. to Barry Craig in just a moment. In these uncertain times, it's hard to plan for the future, but more and more American girls are discovering a career that offers both opportunity and security. That career is in modern nursing. You may have old-fashioned ideas about the profession of nursing, and if you do, you owe it to yourself to find out just what this field offers you today. There are new and greater opportunities in this job now than ever before. Today's student nurse receives a valuable professional education, works with interesting and friendly associations, and when your training is completed, there are jobs waiting with airlines, with the Red Cross, in foreign service, with the armed forces, and in many industries. The demand for nurses is continually increasing. To become a student nurse, you must be a high school graduate or a college student of good health and character. If you can qualify, get full information at the nearest hospital in your community. And now back to William Gargan, starring as Barry Craig, Confidential Investigator. I'm not crazy about the great outdoors, but when you're being shot at, you've got room to move. I move. That lawn had been overdone. The bushes at the edge looked like home, but home was far away. But I got there. The barrage gave up. I shot a look at the house, but the marksman hadn't put the lights on behind that open window. And at this distance, I couldn't tell which window it was. 
I thought for a minute of going back to the house and getting indignant. It was a very short minute. Then I started moving away from the house. Jake. Jake. Stop shouting. I had to wake you up. I wasn't asleep. Your eyes were shut and your mouth was open. That's so? That's so. I was concentrating. On what? Springtime. It happens to be the middle of the winter. That's what makes it hard. You know, Jake, there are times when I don't think you're the best elevator man in the world. <laughs> you should have seen me farming in Vermont. Why? I was even worse at that. You going upstairs at this hour of the night? No, but I've got a question for you. You sent a man over to Willie's wagon earlier tonight. Uh, yeah. Small man, perhaps around 60. Pink and white complexion. Gray hat, gray overcoat. Name of Peter Hanson. That's right. He said he wanted to see me. Yeah. What time was it? Oh, around 8.30. Which would be about right. Fifteen minutes for him to get to Willie's wagon. Give or take five and... Jake. Yeah. Did he look all right to you? Looked beautiful. What does that mean? Dollar tip. Aside from that. I didn't notice anything wrong. That's not positive enough. Jake, did he have his coat open when he was in here? Yeah, he had to. Why? To get at that dollar. That's what I wanted to know. It means he was stabbed on his way from here to the wagon, not before. Does, eh? Has to be that way. This fellow stabbed bad? Bad as you can be. Jake, did he mention why he wanted to see me? No. Reason's obvious enough by now. Good night, Jake. Good night. Well, Mr. Craig, you ain't going up? I'm going home, I think. Getting old? Mm, no more than usual. Why? I'm getting old more than usual, but I still wouldn't go home. What would you do? I'd go up to my office. There's someone up in the office? Yeah. Got here a couple of minutes before you did. Did he mention his name? She didn't. She? What did she look like? Springtime. Mona Bailey. Oh, that what they calling it this year? Thanks, Jake. You ain't using the elevator? No, the stairs. You need exercise? I need to make sure she doesn't know I'm on my way. I could be wrong, but she might be here to finish an unfinished job. Three flights aren't a lot to climb, but they took me longer than you'd think. Of course, Mona Bailey might not have been the marksman behind the open window, but the odds weren't too good. And when someone has decided you make a lovely target, you need all the odds there are. Even if she reminds a night elevator man of springtime. I pushed the door open, but didn't use the doorway. Not for a couple of seconds. Nothing happened. I called myself a coward and walked through the doorway. Mona Bailey had whirled in the chair as I came through the doorway, and she wasn't holding a chess piece in her hand. Hello. Mr. Craig. Please don't call all this a coincidence. Oh, it isn't. Thanks. That gun in your hand might be a mistake, though. Not really. You see, I didn't know who'd be coming through that door. And now that you know... I'll put the gun away. In the pocket of your coat. Well, a girl never knows when she might need a gun. As, for example, uh, at 8.30 this evening... Is that when Peter Hansen was killed? Roughly. Weren't you watching the time? You're being unkind. Are you always unkind? Call it self-defense. What did you want here? I might have wanted to see you again. So soon? We weren't alone the last time we met. We weren't close enough then for me to notice your perfume. And now you've noticed it? I'll remember it. When I get to be as old as Jake. That's too long to wait. I'll wait. Until you tell me why you searched the office. I... You didn't get a chance to close a couple of the desk drawers. You might have left them open. I might have, but I didn't. Good night, Mr. Craig. You're jumping cues. There's more conversation coming. Noticing those desk drawers, Mr. Craig, while I was close to you, is insulting. Call it an occupational disease. What were you looking for? A red queen? I told you I threw it in the fire. 
Peter Hansen's right hand wasn't singed. Singed? As it would have been had he pulled the queen he was holding when he died out of the fire. Oh. I don't have it. By now, the police do. You try your story on them, they won't bother tying up loose ends. They'll arrest me? What do you think? What should I do? You were playing chess with Peter Hansen. Say at eight. Then what? He said he had an appointment and left. So the Walter took his place at the board. And... and played with you? Yes. Without a queen? Still no good. Peter Hansen left. Where was Walter Hansen at the time? Up in his room, I guess. And he didn't join you till when? Oh, nearly nine. Therefore, he can't alibi you? No. After I walked out of the handsome house before, uh, what did you do? I went to get my things. I knew I'd have to follow you. I hoped I'd be able to get here before you did, so I could look for the queen. I thought you had it. You sure you didn't stop to slow me up by firing a few bullets at me? I didn't. Any witnesses to what you say happened? How could there be? I wouldn't know. We might try finding out. Come here to the window. Stay to one side, though. All right. That car across the street. Yours? I came by cab. Recognize the car? It's the Hanson car. It belonged, like everything else, to Peter. Know who's driving it? I can't see from up here. How would you like a chance to convince me that, uh, that the perfume you use isn't something to forget? I'd like such a chance. Okay. Walk out of here, go downstairs, and walk out of the building and north along Madison a few blocks. Then take a cab home. That, that's all? That's all. All right, but I... Don't worry. There'll be another installment. She used the elevator, I used the stairs. That let me get down to the lobby and behind a curtain before she made it. She went out of the building and walked north along Madison Avenue. The car on the opposite side of the street didn't move. That meant more work for me. The back alley was dark and cold. But it let me out half a block down from the entrance, half a block down and behind the waiting car. I crossed the street fast and moved in. The boy in the car was too busy watching the building entrance. I got the door open, reached in, and... Look, go on. I, I hope this hurts. He lost interest for a while. I slid into the seat beside him and went through his pockets. I found the gun without any trouble. It was still faintly warm. I broke the gun and found two bullets left. He hadn't bothered reloading who? The butler grows, of course. Oh. Oh. Wake up. You can't stay in a coma forever, Groves. Oh. oh. Mr. Craig. Mr. Craig. Don't bother reaching for anything. I've got the gun. Yes, sir. Think you're up to driving? Yes, sir. Then let's get started. Very well, sir. To, uh, to the police, sir. Don't rush things. Let's make it the house first. You really should give your employers notice, shouldn't you? Groves. Yes, sir? How long has it been going on? How long has what been going on? The thefts from the house. Uh... That tells me there have been thefts. But it doesn't tell me how long. Peter Hansen was a selfish, grasping Don't old man. Don't speak ill of the dead. Why not? After they've done ill to the living. Meaning who? Miss Mona, sir. He wouldn't give her anything. Let her live the way she wanted to live. So she stole. I don't know, sir. But if she did, what matter? It was coming to her anyway. Half of it as soon as Mr. Hansen died. She should have been patient. I know it doesn't look good for her. I overheard back of the house, but... Uh... That's why you took those pot shots at me? I... Yes, sir. And why you were waiting outside the building. Okay. Rose, Peter Hansen was crazy about chess, wasn't he? Yes, sir. A man as rich as that would own a fine set. Ivory. Antique and expensive. 
He does, sir. You mean he did? The Red Queen I found in his hand was wood. So was the set it came from. I... I don't know, sir. I can guess. He found out tonight that someone had stolen the ivory set and substituted a wooden one for it. That's why he was coming to me with a specimen. He wanted me to trace it so he could prove who'd stolen the ivory set. Oh, you better stop. We're at the house. Don't bother knocking. It'll be the study. Yeah, but this time you come in with me. Yes, sir. It's Craig. Bro, what? He didn't have a chance to use up the last two bullets, Mrs. Bailey. What last two bullets? What's going on? Groves tried to murder me, Mr. Hanson. He did? Dreadful, but, but, but why? He's afraid I might pin the killing of Peter Hanson on Mrs. Bailey. Oh, Really? But she couldn't have killed him, uh, could she? Are you asking me? Well, you you seem to know. Well, how about that alibi you handed her? Well, I, uh... I didn't want any unpleasantness, but, uh... Well, if you have other evidence, uh, Have you? I have. Then I'm afraid I shall have to admit we... We weren't together all the time. As a matter of fact, I wasn't even home. I know you weren't. Now, you can't blame me for trying to shield Mona. Oh, I can't. What I'm blaming you for is trying to hang the killing on her. Uh, hang the killing on her? Why, you're, you're mad. Why would I do that? You might object to being electrocuted. It's unpleasant. Electrocuted? For what? The murder of your brother. Now, don't move. <laughs> I got his arm before he could get at the gun he was carrying. It was only a flesh wound, but he was the sensitive type. He fainted. The police revived him. Uh, that would seem to be that. Yeah. You didn't really have any proof against him? He was anxious to tell me you were a suspect. In a hurry. He set up the alibi and made it look as though he were lying for your benefit. He didn't try very hard to make the lie sound good. Why? Because he didn't want it believed. That gave me enough to go on. I don't think it was nearly enough. Also, uh... Yes, Barry? He uh, wouldn't make anyone dream of the springtime. You've been listening to William Gorgon in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Tonight's story, The Crimson Queen, was written by Lou Vittis. Next week, it's the strange story titled The Vanished Lady, about which Barry Craig has this to say. Next week, a laughing killer finds the laugh is on himself. A blonde turns gray when a corpse comes to life. And a gunsmith finds that shooting off his mouth can be fatal. Good night, folks. See you next week. Bromo Seltzer, famous for fast relief of headache and upset stomach, and the National Broadcasting Company have presented Barry Craig, Confidential Investigator, starring William Garkin. Featured in the role of Mona was Barbara Weeks. Carl Caruso speaking. There's more to a child in an iron lung than meets the eye. Beside her is American sympathy. And these are the days that sympathy becomes action as all America joins the 1953 March of Dimes. Your dimes and dollars sent to your local March of Dimes headquarters today promise all prisoners of polio a brighter tomorrow. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Mm -hmm.